Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be about some reflections and takeaways from the first year of Genetic Counseling School. So finish up the first year at the end of April. Uh, then we had some specific time designated to work on our thesis for the first two weeks of May. After that, I now moved back home for the summer to do my clinical rotation for the summer, uh, which is going to be an industry rotation uh, at a genetic testing company, which I can talk more about a little bit later, but that's kind of the gist of the current state for my education. Be going into second year in mid-August and then finishing up. So very exciting. Learned a ton about genetics and also just, um, you know, the industry and the profession. So there's a lot of really cool things to share and let's get right into it. One of the first things I learned this year, there's definitely a level playing field within your cohort. So Everyone comes in with different diversity of experiences, which is something that's really cool about genetic counseling is it's accessible to a lot of different people. Um, different terms of like lifestyle, timeline, experience in different industries or professions, and also kind of like college majors and degrees of expertise, those kind of things. So in our cohort, we have two people that came right from college, including myself. We have a couple of people that had one or two gap years doing any kind of job. Some of those people's jobs was a genetic counseling assistant, which obviously is directly relevant to genetic counseling. There's also some people that did more of like a career change. They've been out of school for a little while doing something else and then coming to genetic counseling. So really anyone can do it and it's very accessible in that way, which is something that's really awesome. But what's even better about that is that everyone has these different experiences that they can bring to the table. So like when we had a molecular genetics um, class this fall, I felt prepared to take, you know, take that class and study together based on my work in college with molecular biology degree. Whereas then other people can, you know, bring their expertise when we do psychosocial heavy, like empathy kind of things, because they might've had a psychology degree and focus on those kind of things in college. Other people, you know, shine with presentation skills and helping that kind of thing because they used to be a teacher. So even though right in the beginning, there seems to be a big gap of experience and expertise, just in terms of, you know, some people were, worked with genetic counselors before or worked in a hospital or did this or that. Uh, and that could be intimidating at first, but I would say within a couple weeks, two or three weeks maximum, the playing field kind of levels out and then you're really all equals and all at the same point. Um, going through your classes and everything together. And so I think that is something to keep in mind that everyone's experiences are very valuable, but at the same time, it doesn't make anyone better than anyone else. It truly is equal. You're all kind of starting at the same point, just with some different perspectives. But on the lines of cohorts, I would say another thing I learned is that, you know, your cohorts can make or break your experience and just be a really great positive addition to your time in grad school you end up spending way more time than you would think with these people because at the minimum, you're taking all the same classes, um, you know, working at the same base probably. And so, you know, then outside of class is your time to decide how you spend it. But uh, we have kind of an office space at Cincinnati. And so we would always spend a lot of time there with the cohort. And so just being able to get close to those people who are going through a very niche field uh, at the same exact time as you with the same exact like details, same exact classes um, and same interests. It's really nice to have those people to lean on and just kind of make it fun and uh, enjoyable for everyone to go through these two years together. So that can mean support for classwork, for just to have people know what you're going through when you have all these assignments and exams or you're working hard on your thesis um, or you need advice for a clinic or something like that. But also, you know, socially, it's a great resource to have. You know, for academics, it's a really great resource. We've found ourselves doing a lot of group studying this year. And that's something that I personally was not a huge fan of in the past. Like in college, I would mostly do independent studying for my things. But um, with genetic counseling, I found that having people when you're taking the same exact classes uh, and learning all the same things at the same time, it's been just tremendously helpful to have that kind of resource. So definitely would recommend just leaning into your cohort as much as possible. Another thing when you're starting out in your first year is you really need to remember to give yourself some grace. That's something that is a constant struggle because there's so much information you're learning and so much is coming at you. I don't know how every program does this, but we would have some classes with second years. And so they obviously have the entire first year of genetic counseling under their belt. So they know all this information that you are about to learn, but you've yet to learn. So 
that can be really intimidating um, if, if you are in the same classes with them or the same environment with them. So just remembering that you're not expected to know those things yet. You will learn them in due time. It's coming, uh, you're on track, you know, just, just the way you are. Program leadership is always really good about making sure you're on track, checking in with you, being a good resource if you have questions or you feel like you might be, you know, off track or something like that. I just remember the first couple classes we had with the second years, we were going through review questions or presentations they were doing about clinical cases. And obviously we had no idea what was going on and they were all participating in discussions and answering questions classmates were posing to the group. And it felt like, why, how do I not know this, this information yet? Should I know this? Like what's going on? But you know, in due time, you'll learn all of those things. And then, you know, that's going to be you when you're a second year. So that's something to keep in mind and totally normal part of the process. One particular thing I learned that I was not expecting or that I didn't really consider before uh, comes from clinic and just in terms of working with patients. So obviously if you're in genetic counseling school and this is what you're pursuing, you love genetics, you love to help people, you love to talk about these things. But the fact of the matter is a lot of people don't care about that stuff. And even if they're coming to a genetics clinic for treatment or for a consultation, just because they're being evaluated or counseled for genetics does not mean they actually have any investment in it or care about it. So that's just kind of a tough reality that, you know, is not the case for everyone. Some people think it's really cool to be in a genetic counseling session or have a lot of questions for you or ask about the details and details about testing, details about what DNA is or what cancer is, or those kind of things. And that's, a, you know, interesting conversation to have with your patients, but some people just don't really care and you still give them the same treatment and give them the same explanation about the different testing and the different options they have, um, how that's going to impact their health, but they're not necessarily going to be like super eager to engage in conversation about what a pathogenic variant is or why that amino acid substitution is like causing their cancer risk or something like that. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind. That's going to vary by patient and it's just a normal part of the process too. But that was kind of surprising to me because um, just being in genetic counseling program, everyone is so into genetics that when you have patients who you, you want to help and you want to explain these things to them and they don't really have the same level of investment, that's just something interesting to come across. Another thing I would say is in terms of going to clinic, um, not all programs start at the same time, but regardless of when you start clinic, definitely push your limits because uh, you always will be supervised, especially when you're starting out. Uh, so you have a supervisor to fall back on and that's important to realize because uh, that lets you take risks. I know the reason that I would be hesitant to do those kind of things in clinic is because it's not like just a role play or a hypothetical. Like it's actually someone's doctor's appointment, like someone's medical care that you're dealing with. And so while we're not doing anything physically, like a procedure to them that you would be messing up by pushing your limits potentially uh, or causing harm to someone, it's just talking and sharing information, but it could be nerve wracking to impose that on someone because you're still learning you're still practicing uh, but you have a supervisor who can make corrections if you need to and i feel like i got a lot better at pushing my limits in clinic when i wanted to try something new or wanted to take on a new role and the worst thing would be having regrets about not trying something and then you feel like you're set back a little bit because you know there was a couple instances before i kind of grasped this concept where uh my supervisors would offer for me to do something and i would be a little bit more conservative about the roles I took on. And then when they do the roles they were proposing for you, uh, you realize that you totally could have done that yourself and that you kind of wasted an opportunity to try something that you were more than capable of. So it's always worth taking those risks or just, not that it's a risk, but to try something new and that might be out of your comfort zone a little right. bit. I was just editing the video to post it and I thought of something else that I really wanted to say. So it's along the lines of not comparing yourself to your classmates and everyone's on the same level and everything like that. But basically there's the three tenets of all genetic counseling programs, which is the didactic coursework, the thesis or research component, and then the clinical component. And the coursework is always the same for all the students. So that's a really easy way to measure and compare yourself against your classmates in terms of like how you're doing and the progress you're making, those kind of things. But then once you go to clinic and once you start working on your research project, you're going on a completely different path and trajectory from your classmates. And so that could be really stressful 
when you're comparing to their progress. So with the research project, you're gonna have a different topic, a different research style, a different experiment or you know project style, different supervisors, different specialty, like all these different things. And so your timeline, the way we do it is working on it in incremental assignments to build up to a, a proposal for the IRB to submit for approval to start your project. But as soon as you establish your project and have your research question uh, solidified, then you're completely off track from your other classmates because you're all doing your own research question. And it's easy to compare to each other when you're working in this with each other and kind of collaborating on doing your research because you're all generally in the same stages of your research, but within your own project, they become so different that it can be stressful to compare to what your classmate is doing for their research project. So that's something important to keep in mind of not comparing because you have different supervisors, different questions, different requirements for your own research, and it doesn't have to be the same as your classmates. So uh, just keeping that in mind. And the same thing goes for clinic because in clinic, you're never gonna be rotating, at least the way it works with us, where um, definitely not rotating with the same supervisor. And that means likewise, not in the same uh, specialty. So everyone's ends up being in pretty much a different kind of specialty or different location or a different department or a different hospital system uh, with a different genetic counseling supervisor. And so your clinical experiences also just are completely different. And you might have the same experience at a later date with the same supervisor as one of your classmates, but in the moment when you're comparing your clinical responsibilities, caseload, stress, patients, workload, all this stuff, it's not gonna align with your classmates. And sometimes you're gonna have a harder one than your classmates. Sometimes you'll have an easier one. Sometimes you'll have one that you like more than how your classmates like theirs. And that's another thing that's stressful to compare with your classmates. So while the coursework is something that's kind of helpful to have the same exact thing with your classmates, you have to realize that research and clinic are not going to be the same as your classmates, basically out of the gate, as soon as you solidify uh, your research question and as soon as you go into the clinic for the first time. So keep those in mind because that's something that I always struggled with this year is feeling like I was doing something wrong or not on track because my other classmates were seemingly further ahead in their research, but it's all relative to your own project or it's all relative to your own clinical rotation for that, you know, five week block. So that's something to keep in mind too. One of the last takeaways or things I would share about this year is that a lot of times when we had interviews for our program, the students would get on there to meet some of the students or you know have some like social hours before the interview so that they could get to know some of the students um, and just kind of introduce everyone and make everyone feel welcomed. And so I did a bunch of those this year or you know gave some other presentations during interviews. And pretty much on every interview that I was on, there was at least one person that would say they saw the videos on this channel and that they thought it was really helpful or they just got something out of the channel or they recognized me from the channel. And so that was super cool to see full circle because that's the whole reason I do this to try to help new students and to help people who want to get into genetic counseling. And um, that, that was a really cool thing to see this year and see that play out. So I'll continue making these videos and hopefully more of those things will happen in the future and just more people will be able to get something out of this content. So that was really cool to see. It's been a really good first year. There's still a lot to do for this rest of the summer and this next year. But if there's any questions about things I didn't touch on in this video, obviously I can't cover everything, but these were just some of the main things that stood out to me when I think back on my first year and kind of how things went. So there's other questions about specific parts of the program or specific parts of genetic counseling uh, programs as a first year student. Put those in the comments and I can try to address them. But other than that, I hope you get something out of this video and good luck wherever you are in this process. See you next time.